Genuine Photo by James Burr. Music and effects by freesfx.co.uk. He climbed the narrow stairs to the floor above, carpets worn on the risers, bare light bulb in the hall. The sounds of the throngs of shoppers making their way home or early revellers heading to the city bars and pubs along the darkening streets receded behind him. He stood outside the closed door, paint flaking from it, exposing stained wood beneath, and looked at the card in his hand, on it a picture of a busty blonde in lingerie, her features blurred, her contours faint and ill-defined, a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. The card said, Angelina, genuine photo, clean and discreet, genuine girlfriend experience. He paused for a moment, his hand inches away from the door, before stealing himself and knocking perhaps, he thought, a little too hard. After a few moments the door opened and a middle-aged woman, considerably older and heavier set than the photo on the card, answered the door. Hello, darling, come in out of the cold, she said, as she ushered him into the room, closing the door behind him. I'm Angelina, she said as she removed a stained, fluffy pink robe, revealing dimpled cottage cheese thighs escaping in folds from the tops of her stockings. And you are... Norman, he said. And what exactly are you interested in, Normie? Well... He sat on the bed and scratched his head. I was wondering if Rob Grier was indeed correct in attempting to wrest fiction free from 19th century constraints like plot and character. Uh, Resting objects free from imposed meanings through the form of the new novel which was characterised by fragmentation and existential doubt. Where does that leave the novel in the 21st century? The woman looked confused as she sat next to him and slipped her hand beneath his shirt. After all, what's the purpose of existential doubt? If Derrida was correct in considering that it's possible to deconstruct the meaning of a text so that it's not a discrete whole, but contains several irreconcilable and contradictory meanings. Any text can therefore have more than one interpretation, and the text itself links these interpretations inextricably, so that the incompatibility of these interpretations is irreducible. An interpretive reading cannot go beyond a certain point. She stopped caressing his nipple and withdrew her hand from his shirt. What? I... uh... But if signifier and signified are both cultural concepts as they are in post-structuralism, reference to an empirically certifiable reality is no longer even guaranteed by language. The loss of reference can cause an endless deferral of meaning, a system of differences between units of language that has no resting place or final signifier that would enable the other signifiers to hold their meaning. Her lips curled in both confusion and what could have been disgust. You what? I don't have all day. It's fifty quid for oral or a hundred quid for... But then what does a text even mean if Lacan was right in arguing that the self is constituted by language, which is never one's own and always another's, already in use? What's the purpose of a text if the fixed, stable self is a romantic fiction and just a decentered mass of traces left by our encounter with signs, visual symbols and language? She stood up and put on her robe angrily, pulling it tight around her ample waist. Look, I suck cocks. I give hand relief. I smear my face in baby batter and indulge in anal rimming. I don't talk about Lukács' contribution to an understanding of the relationship between historical materialism and literary form. All right. He looked at the card and the apparently now hollow promises it offered. So... No discussions on Freudian analysis? No. No Marxist critiquing of the influence of class structures on literature? No. No Gramscian analysis that domination is often achieved through culturally orchestrated consent rather than force? No. Oh. I see. Okay, I'll just have a blowjob then. <laughs>